The video you are about to see is the product of a qualitative research process. The recorded interviews are the data. The segments selected here represent the broad range of attitudes and opinions expressed regarding trust in government, willingness to participate in vaccine studies, and suggestions for conducting HIV vaccine research. The objective of this video is to inform those concerned with community-based HIV research, scientists and community members alike. The people you will see are working mothers, religious leaders, social activists, physicians, unemployed laborers. All are real people expressing their personal attitudes and feelings. There was no script. Each person, known or unknown, is a member of their community, and thus each voice deserves our attention. Are you saying, would I take the vaccine? I'm not first, no. I'm not going to be standing in line. I mean, it's like, well, why do I need to do this now? Should I wait five years till there's a vaccine that's much more effective? Uh, HIV is a government-made disease. But would I be willing to participate? Yes. I think so. I mean, you know, you have to have some trust somewhere. We, we use the term guinea pig. We don't want to be the guinea pig. I, I think it's all about economics. You know, does this mean I can fuck without a condom? <clears throat> I think I'd be very worried about side effects. But the Tuskegee study is very fresh to me. We got more faith in, in the street drug than we do in the government. <clears throat> yeah, and yeah. really, that's what that's... it comes down to. Um, and that you can't HIV get... preventative vaccines are currently being tested for safety and immune response with volunteers who are at low risk for HIV infection. The next step is testing these vaccines with individuals at high risk of exposure to HIV through drug and sex-related behaviors. The test groups include minority communities which have often been victims of research abuse, government neglect, and social discrimination. A significant breach exists between medical researchers and the people with whom they need to work. This break in trust needs to be mended if future research is to be successful. Project LINKS, linking communities and scientists, is a two-year study that seeks to understand community attitudes towards government-sponsored medical research and to find ways that scientists and community members can collaborate in the search for effective HIV vaccines. Project LINKS is working with three communities, two of them, Injection drug users in Philadelphia and gay men in San Francisco are known to be at high risk for infection with HIV. African Americans have been disproportionately affected by the AIDS epidemic. Durham, North Carolina was chosen as a representative African American community. This video is one of the research products of Project Links. San Francisco's gay community is remarkable in its diversity. Young, old, rich, poor, men and women of every possible ethnic and racial background. But it is also a community noted for its unity when attacked. The AIDS epidemic has touched everyone in gay San Francisco and created a community with passionate feelings and attitudes. We've been so strongly impacted by this epidemic that um, you're probably going to find more people here who would be more interested in trying something, anything. Uh, my kind of tech is that I think most people are pretty apathetic about a vaccine. Um, it seems distant, it seems remote. In the Latino community, there's not a clear understanding of what these clinical trials are, especially, again, in immigrant Latinos. People will be concerned with, he's in an HIV vaccine study, he has AIDS. He has HIV, because it's happened to me. I don't know, I just feel like we're a minority, you know, and, and, and in the bigger picture of things, we're not really um, treated that well by the government. The gay community really is not a, a community, a single community. It's much more a community of communities. You know, uh, Project Link study has found that there's, like, within San Francisco, there's at least 17 different communities that people identify with. my 
Survival has always been a struggle for African Americans. In Durham, North Carolina, the legacy of this struggle can be seen in the political activism and unity of its people. Today, the community must also protect itself from AIDS. Our race, the black race, were victimized in some of their surveys and researches as documented. The first thing that comes to mind is the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. When I think of government research, I think about a lot of people coming here from the government with white things on, walking around, giving everybody a shot, and seeing what they gonna be, you, see, you know, seeing what they gonna do. Well. I have asked some people, and um, there seem to be two schools of thought. Either they think that the research that would be done would just make them guinea pigs, and that they would be harmed by the research, or that there will be research done that doesn't include African Americans at all, and so they would be left behind. This is the first time I probably talked to about it openly. Matter of fact, me and Sherry are good friends, and I don't even think we ever talked about it. <laughs> Yeah, we talk about a lot of things, but I don't even think we ever talked about our opinions on HIV or AIDS. They'll unleash things on the community, and then they can't deal with it anymore. When it gets out of hand, it's like, well, we've discovered. And you know, a lot of times when they say they've discovered, it's not a discovery. It's just we are the one who are discovering it. They're the ones who put it out there. The government got a whole lot of secrets, you know, and. It just puzzles me, it just worries me, it just makes me think about, are they really going to be honest with us? The AIDS epidemic has had a profound impact on the injection drug using community. In Philadelphia, the number of diagnosed AIDS cases among injection drug users exceeds all other risk groups. The active participation of this group is essential to the development of HIV vaccines and preventative interventions. But the group's limited connection to community institutions and its distrust of those outside the group make traditional research methods difficult. All, why do you come down in my neighborhood as if to say we are the only ones that have it? And what good is it going to do you for you to help cure me. The uh, people in Washington, to us, to, to them, we're nothing. We're just a couple of junkies out on the street. I think this whole thing started with the government anyway. I know people laugh at that, but I think this is a biological experiment that got out of hand. They found out that drug addicts were getting in homosexuals and whatever, instead of finding a cure right away, they just let it go. Anytime you let people walk around with a disease like syphilis and then don't give them any kind of uh, medication, I mean, that's enough to turn you off insofar as that's trusting a... somebody. I mean, like, you know, yeah, after what? But... The Tuskegee, all the, all the experiments you hear about that they were so nice with? Trying right, to get like... somebody to try and do, take the vaccine <coughs> isn't going to be easy. We take risks with our lives every day. Oh, yeah. So why not take a chance with this? Yeah, I would probably be the one that would try it. I think a lot of people will make the decision based on what's in it for them and what's in it for their friends and be less concerned about uh, the government per se. Do you actually think anybody in here, who raised their hand, who would take a vaccine if they had a vaccine for HIV, AIDS? Raise your hand, I said. In the hands? No, sir. No, sir, I wouldn't. I just don't have the trust level. Somebody has to do it, you know, and I would be willing. I would participate in a vaccine study, most definitely, and I encourage all my friends to do the same. I still would like to see some results first. I can't think of any information you could give me to make me want to take a vaccine to risk my life. Why would I want to do anything that would endanger my health insurance? If I knew it was going to help in any kind of way, 
I think of that all the time, getting HIV, considering the kind of what I do to make my money. I wouldn't be the first to take it. I, I don't know if I would say yes or if I would say no. Yes, I think so. I just think the risk is too great. Cause see, how do I know what you're putting in me? As long as it didn't put me in direct danger, I'd participate. I don't want the United States government injecting anything <laughs> into, into my body. Seeing the persecution that gays in this country have to go through and the government don't stand up for them, but yet they want to test us and use us as guinea pigs. You know, there's, it's give and take, you know. If you want us to help you out, then you help us out. Well, because of the lifestyle that I uh, lead, I've mostly taken in this life, and maybe I can give a little bit back. I've come here for two and a half years, said, yes, I'll do it, yes, I'll do it, yes, I'll do it. But as you get closer to doing it, closer to doing it, closer to doing it, I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this now. So I take this vaccine, it doesn't work, does that mean they won't give me another vaccine? People are afraid of what might happen if they participate in something like this later on down the road um, with their jobs, with their health care, with their life insurance, with their families, with their life partners, um, with whoever it is it, that it also may affect. It's just not me that's going to be affected by me taking the vaccine. There are going to be a lot of people in my, my family, my community, are going to be affected by what I do. For a lot of people of color, they live um, at or below poverty lines. So if one person is out of work for even a day or two, it, it really does affect the family and how it survives. I think gay men would participate in the trials for two reasons. One is our own self-interest, and two is the interest of other people. I mean, altruism is one thing, and, it, and it's wonderful. That's why people get involved and do things. Um, but when it comes to... But if, you know, if later, if I'm exposed to HIV and my body can't fight it off as well because I'm part of a vaccine study, you know, it didn't, didn't serve me in the long run. If I want to help somebody, do something. I ain't did nothing for nobody in a long time. And this is one way, you know. If I'm involved in something that's going to help to prevent my children from even having to be bothered with it, you know, then I mean, I, I, I feel good about me. And if people don't stick their necks out a little bit and participate for the better of the community, we'll never know what does work, what doesn't, what the short-term and long-term long effects are. We absolutely need to do that. The idea of being in a vaccine study is scary to me because historically, I mean, when they were coming up with polio vaccines, you know, people died. Uh, all vaccines always have part of whatever it is of the ailment in it. You see, and you know, if anybody, people that, that, that's wise to that and know these things, they're gonna be more than reluctant to take it. Chicken pox, yes. Smallpox, yes. Measles, yes. HIV, eight, nope. I'll have to relate back to, I guess, an experience that I had several years ago of taking the flu vaccine. That was the only time I ever had the flu. <laughs> As you get older, our immune system does get depressed, and uh, so it wouldn't take too, too much, probably, to create a real problem for us. Uh, it's, it's scary. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even want to test a false positive. We still do not accept, unfortunately, uh, persons who carry this virus. Some people bring up the fact that just the psychological aspects of knowing that the blood that's coursing through their veins is HIV positive, period, no matter what the reason it may be, even if it's the vaccine that's causing it, that they're not infected with the virus, but that even the vaccine itself would cause your blood to be HIV antibody positive, gives some people the willies, just because there's such a stigma associated with being HIV positive. You can get it intellectually that I'm not really seropositive, but really getting it emotionally, I think, is something different for people and that's a harder leap for people to take. I definitely would not recommend it to anyone um, who's currently in the process of uh, naturalizing, becoming a citizen, anything like that. I know that I want to go to um, a country like China, um, which is a very personal issue for me because I am Chinese American and I want to spend a lot of time there. Um, but I know that they have a policy of not any, letting anyone into the country that tests positive. They can actually use more sensitive tests and look for virus, but that's not what an insurance company is going to do, and that's not what they're going to do at the border of a country. You know, medical research is it's a minefield of problems. There's ethical problems, there's access problems, there's uh, 
um, what people want versus what the scientists want. Um, so it's a minefield. And each of those little mines has to be handled in some way or it's going to explode. To establish trust with the community, you need to go where trust is already established. Like involving the churches and the schools and all the local uh, areas where people have trust that. I think that would help out and the community advisory boards being on every study that's done to make sure that those things that are being done are on the up and up. A lot of people go in, and this is certainly true for physicians, uh, go in with a sense, we have something to give you. Well, that's open to question. And that means that the scientists have to slow down and really listen and take time and try and put themselves in the shoes of, of somebody else. You just can't send the white collar worker, you know, to the ghetto, to the abandoned houses and think that they're going to get any type of response no. because they're uh, not. It's just like now. Three people since y'all been here have asked, came to this barbershop and asked me, what them white people doing out there? For the government to, to, to make this thing work, they will have to come to people like Vic, the, the people in the community who are actually in the community and try to um, get them to speak for them. Well, the Italian word is cicerone, a guide. You have to have somebody who gets you in, somebody who can vouch for you. After that, it's all on you. It would really come down to who asked me and how they asked. Enséñame en español. Hazme un video en español. Hazme un folleto en español, un formulario en español. Ponme a alguien que me entreviste en español, alguien que me diga en mi idioma. You have to take a number of cultural aspects into it, what is accessible, what does that mean in Spanish, it's not accessible, it's not a, just one word for another word. There are a couple of concepts that need to be, if not translated, that need to be interpreted. Because they would just like nod their heads to the doctor, being very respectful, honoring what the doctor is saying or the researcher is saying, but not really understanding a single word that they said. There's a lot of people that just want to help, and that's why they do it. Um, but there's some people that, you know, a good amount of people that um, money or some kind of incentive, vouchers for something, definitely helps them make that decision. You're going to have to have something even to draw them in the door. Yeah, that's you know, true. And, nothing, and, you see, yeah, and nothing is going to draw them like a dollar. I think the best way they can relate is like something like this where they're offering a practical service or practical information. It definitely will encourage people to participate, whether that is an HIV test or um, some kind of um, counseling. There's a risk, however, if you incorporate too many services, healthcare services, with a preventative vaccine study, that you become coercive in nature, that the benefits of participating way outweigh the risk. In 92, I was part of the GP120 study. Uh, we went through a process of informed consent, and at that point, I understood it or I thought I understood it. I wish I would have had some time to, like, you know, think about this, read this over, talk amongst your friends about it, and then come back in a month. People need to know the background before they ever come in to do informed consent. They need to know what a clinical trial is. They need to know why they have to be big. They need to know what the ethical problems are. They, know, they need to know what the risks of of being in a vaccine trial are before they come into a clinic and hear about a specific trial of a specific product. This, you know, a discussion group, this is much more interesting than like just sitting, you know, and talking with, you know, like a counselor or something. This, you get sort of a different take on, it's funny, I, I, it's, it's comforting to me to know that everyone has equal reservations about even doing this. It's like, okay, so this is not me just being sort of freaked out about this. This is kind of freaky thinking about doing this. The problem I have is an ethical problem. Um, if we're going to ask people to use a vaccine without asking them to do some very serious preventive measure uh, to, be, to protect themselves from the disease, um, then we, I think we, we really stand on risky ground. They're taking out the high risk group, as those things. Now we've been spending all this time telling people, be careful, be careful. Well, how are they going to get the research and know that this thing is working? What are we going to do, tell people, oh, well, never mind being careful since you're on the vaccine. Forget taking precautions. Risk reduction counseling, you know, individuals 
lowering their risk of exposure to HIV is going to be paramount in conducting vaccine trials because we know the nature of the beast is, is that people are more likely to increase their risk potentially if they think they're protected against HIV. So not only are people going to need the standard counseling that everybody gets when they go and get tested for HIV, but they're also going to, we're going to need to make sure we point this out to them that they're probably by nature be thinking they're more at, they could take more risks. People might end up missing the fact that they've become infected and assume, oh, it's just my old vaccine antibody that's out there. So unless, you know, the vaccine research, the trials commit to following up and caring for these volunteers, literally for the rest of their lives, there's a real danger that they're going to do them a disservice. A lot of the thought process around all of this is very, very short-sighted. You know, not thinking of what's going to be needed in the long term. I believe that we're going to have to have a bunch of trials, a series of trials, in order to get a really good vaccine and that that means maybe decades of work. And it certainly means not just cherry picking the people who are interested in being in a vaccine trial. If you burn a community once in a city, then I'm sure that it's, it, it's going to take a lot more money and a lot more resources to bring those people back or to bring similar people back into the fold again. I would expect progress reports. I would expect people from the local community to be very involved from all levels and disciplines. Researchers need to involve the community in um, the final data analysis. What, what does the data actually say before it's actually published into the community? And more importantly, how is this data going to be used in the future? How, how does the community benefit out of this? I want to know everything. I want to be, I want to know when you know. You know, I don't want no secrets. People clearly do not have enough information about HIV, about AIDS, and certainly vaccines. And not in, in jargon, not in medical jargon, but in real, you know, layman's terms, about what they know, what is known, and what is not known. You know, be honest. Don't BS anybody. Just be real no matter what the reality is. And it might work. People believe um, their friends anecdotally more than they believe the medical profession. Like they said it was a mosquito. You could catch it from a mosquito bite. Then I find out you can't catch it from a mosquito bite. It's so much talk about it that people don't know that yeah. scares me. You heard him say the thing about the two weeks, so you trust him saying that the two weeks. And me, you know, I know the thing about being, like, testing positive is no big deal because I would know that there's another test that you can take. And everybody's hearing different snippets of the information that you, you tell us. It's supposed to pre prevent us from getting So we're going to be AIDS. immunized forever, for, you know, for AIDS, right? They're not sure. Mm, that's right. They're not sure. So they're doing tests on us. That's right. That's what the research <laughs> is all about. OK. Yeah. For the government to try to patch the relationship, it has to be the same way you would patch any relationship. There has to be an apology. There has to be a period of time of healing without another act being done or something else being, you know, to, to muddy the waters. Be honest with people, you know, even if it's not what, you know, it don't turn out the way you want it to turn out, you still have to be honest with people. When they ask you questions about things, tell the truth, you know. Don't build it up or dress it up to suit your situation, you know what I'm saying? And um, they're not very good at that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not very good at that. And um, until I can see improvement in that, I'm not volunteering for anything. Mm -hmm. Go ahead with your work. Come and meet us. Um, don't think that, you know, we're unapproachable, because that's a myth. Just like we believe scientists are unapproachable, and that's a myth also. We'd like to work together with you in a way that, you know, comes up with a successful vaccine. And I think we can do it, but we gotta just trust each other and not be afraid of our ignorance.